Hey guys, how you doing? This is Squared Circle Action Figs here. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Squared Circle Action Figs, or you can follow me on Twitter at Squared Circle AF. Uh, if you are in the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast Facebook page, I'm there as well, so you can hit me up there. Um, and what I'm doing is going to do a live uh, unboxing. A let them breathe session here of this WCW Monday Nitro Lex Luger. It's part of a limited edition set uh, called Heels, which was produced by the original San Francisco Toy Makers in 1997. Again. So, um, uh, what I'd like to do on this unboxing really quickly, though, to start is to give you a little bit of a history of the license. So, um, uh, original San Francisco toy makers, commonly abbreviated as OSFTM, took over the WCW line in 1994. Um, this was coming out of the, uh, the Hasbro era, um, where Hasbro lost the WWF license in 93. Um, and then 94, we kind of were, we didn't have any wrestling figures. I mean, we had those Bendems by Just Toys that were out. So again, bendable statue-esque figures that were about three inches tall, three inch scale. Um, but other than that, really nothing, uh, nothing out. Um, OSFTM was uh, following up this uh, Galoob era where, you know, again, you had a, a really small scale of non-movable figures. Um, so I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I wish somebody could give us a little more history about why they chose this you know, I would say about six inch scale in, in this hard statue form. Um, I know uh, these were, I would say, the predecessors to the LJN line, the WWF LJN line. So, I mean, you could probably put most of these in scale with them. Um, so that was really cool and unique. Um, and they did give you some characters that weren't produced um, by WWF in that era. So, um so yeah, uh, these were a little shinier, a little better paint job. Um, again, the, the, the line started in 1994, um, which I do have a couple here uh, to show you. I do have um, the 94 Series 1 2-pack Stinger here. Um, he's, in, he's in my baggie, as you can see. Really cool figure here. Um, green attire, green and pink. Came in with a 2-pack with uh, Hulk Hogan. Um, which was fun. Um, and then I also have a pretty rare um, Macho Man Randy Savage, which was from series, series 2 of the line. Uh, he's in that orange, black, and yellow attire. You know, I guess you can attribute it to the Slim Jim attire. Figured I'd show him off. Really cool, really good detail. You know, again, no, no articulation couldn't move these guys very limited of playability but when it came to the detail and the likeness they did a pretty good job you know I mean I couldn't say that it was terrible um, but really what what's really unique about this in 94 94 to 97 as we go back to the Lex Luger here uh, they kind of stuck with this hard plastic style but in 97, uh, what they did is they uh, they tried to do some articulation. And as you can see here on the back of the card, um, the articulation and posability was really, really limited to the legs and the arms. Uh, they had this short set, which included Hogan, Sting, Benoit, Hall, Nash, Luger, Taskmaster and the Giant. Uh, some came in two packs. Uh, and they had this, obviously, uh, they had some some also um, color variations. Uh, but uh, what's really unique about these figures, along with the posability, was one, they included sec accessories, which were cool, but then they also vibrated. Uh, don't ask me why. I'd, again, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the idea of that. Um... 
But I think what was very interesting with these these vibrating figures, they also had this line that was still hard plastic statue, and they were called heels, the baddest of the bad. Um, so they kind of, in 97 and 98, didn't really know what direction they wanted to go. Did they want to stay in this this, this very non-posable, hard plastic uh, style? Or did they want to go continue with the statues? There was also a two-pack of Sting that came out, uh, you know, in the black and the white which was hard plastic. Um, and this was really right before they moved to a um, uh, more articulating, posable 4.5 inch scale. Uh, they were smaller, they were more articulated, uh, they had wrestling moves, almost kind of like the ECW line, uh, but a little less friendly, I would say. Um, uh, so anyway, getting in back into this. So this is the one of the last statue figures uh, from the line. I do you do see that this is open. This was a min on card figure that I just opened. Um, unfortunately, what had happened was it's my first recording, so I wanted to do it right. And I think this is this is this is the best it's been. So I'm going to um, remove the luger from the plastic, the bubble, as we call it. Uh, you can see here, it's a really, really nice figure, shiny, completely mint. Um, what was very notorious about these figures, though, is they could, like the LGNs, get marked very easily. And you can see some of this wear, even sitting in the card um, on his ponytail here, you could see that uh, the paint was chipped on his uh, boots here as well. There's some paint chips. This is just movement. You know, it was in the card, it was being beaten around, and the paint, you know, the paint wasn't applied properly. Uh, or it was a cheap style of paint that they used. A really nice figure overall. Again, it comes from the era WCW, NWO. Uh, so uh, if, if Luger is indeed a heel here, he was definitely a member of the NWO uh, black and white, it looks like. Um, with the long ponytail, too, which was cool. I don't know if that I don't think is I don't think that's error accurate, but it could be wrong. You may have had the ponytail then. Uh, but the funniest thing about this figure is the smiling grin on his face, just because this is a heel line, but it doesn't. I don't, know, maybe, I don't get it. I don't know why you would have a guy smiling as part of a heel line. But overall, very very nice figure. Uh, very simple. Very, very nice, simple figure. And uh, the one last thing I just wanted to discuss was that these are very difficult to stand. So even on a flat surface, you know that it would, you know, they would fall. There you go, and they would get marked up even more, which I try to I'm trying not to do right now. And even on a flat surface, you know, because of the weight up top, you could see that he just falls right down. So not a very good feature for a statue figure, but. Not terrible. So uh, I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked learning a little bit about the USFTM line. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the links in the comments below. Again, you can follow me at on Instagram at Squared Circle Action Figs um, or on Twitter at Squared Circle AF. Um, and I hope to post some more videos. Um, about other lines and rarer figures as we move forward. So thank you so much for watching and comment below.